A week after the Herald cycled to a mountain bike race, the city of Kaberha was alive with cycling fever as the Herald Road Cycle Tour took centre stage. But a day before the Road Classic, it was the turn of the very little riders to get a feel for this beautiful sport of cycling. A short course along the beachfront pathways near Pollock Beach was their two-wheel playground and they absolutely loved it. These are the foundations for years spent on the bike. Each finisher received a cool prize and, most importantly, a medal to take to show and tell on Monday morning. In the pre dawn darkness of a windless Sunday morning, riders prepared for the 37th edition of the Herald Cycle Tour. It's a special race on closed roads thanks to the Nelson Mandela municipality, around a city with stunning views and great weather. No, this is my second time and uh, I did the 55 and I hope to do this uh, 106 in a better time. There were two options, the 106 km classic distance and a shorter 55 km race. Uh, I think it's going to be, it's all stay together after the big climb of the day. Obviously you'll try and split it up there to get rid of some of the sprinters so, uh, and then try and get your hunt towards getting the line for the sprint. Uh, it's nice weather, which is unfortunate because I like a really hard, windy, horrible race. So I'm hoping um, that we can make the, night, the racing nice and hard and see what happens. Uh, this is one of the most important flagship events for the city. It has been here for, th for 37 years. It means that it's very important because economically it, it improves the economy of the city because there, uh, there are many people who will be here. Number two, it also promotes a healthy lifestyle among the citizens in the city. So then it's very important. It's going to be exciting. We're also exciting as the city to host it. Coming a week after the National Road Race Championships in Otsu and the elite men's and women's fields had a sprinkling of some of the very top riders in the country in good form. The elite racing bat set off along Marine Drive towards the city. Multiple winner Nolan Hoffman's Alawani team were there with defending champion Reynold Butler back. Another former winner in the field was Clint Hendricks. Realty Dynamics, Kinetic Pro and ASAP also had a number of serious contenders. Inside the first three kilometres and the moves came as they turned left into Hugh Road. Daniel Loebscher drawing out Tien's a bunk of Realty Dynamics. Local youngster Andrew Bosch and Enzo's at Bradley Legule setting a good tempo at the front of the pack. Loebscher, meanwhile, had to wait for company. It was very early in the race, and he perhaps needed someone to share the workload on the front. Neil Rousseau of Realty Dynamics headed up to join him. Loebscher is a very strong rider, but did not have any teammates in the race, so he needed to be policed by the teams keen on a sprint finish. The peloton were prepared to let him go, but they had to keep a decent tempo so as not to allow Lopesha too much leeway. Back at the start, the elite women were about to get going. The legendary Henriette Skuman was there, as were other former winners in Marushka Matia and Haley Preen. The Reach for Rainbows team had good numbers and could afford to send a rider up the road. The bunch also included three categories of the veterans. Back for the men's race and Daniel Loebscher was still up the road on his own. Behind him the teams were perhaps getting just a little twitchy as there was some uncertainty as to just how far the 23 year old from the Western Cape could go solo. Hoffman's Alawani team had most to lose. They were looking to bring it to a sprint for either Hoffman himself or Reynold Butler. Danda Zote and Tulisi Swingpenge were working hard. In fact, the entire group had committed to working to bring the leaders back before the King of the Mountains climb at Maitland. That was some distance away at the moment, so they had to manage their efforts carefully so as not to draw too much of an advance on their salaries and have nothing to spend when it mattered most at the end of the month or the race. Loebscher is a man who thrives on hard rides and he was
was putting his name in lights at the front of the Herald Cycle Tour. He wasn't afraid to gamble. Over the end to a second time, an ASAP, Realty Dynamics, Alawani and Kinetic Pro were well represented at the front of the chase group. Back with the women and reach for rainbows were leading the chase of a lone breakaway rider in Haley Preen. Sunri Rousseau, Charlisa Schultz and Mariska Matia doing the work. Henriette Skuman was a little further back with Tracy Campbell on her wheel. Rousseau had good form as she showed at the SA Champs a week earlier where she'd won the individual elite time trial title and was fifth in the road race. Second in the ITT was Haley Preen who had attacked early in this race and was up the road by a couple of minutes. Rousseau, Schultz and local rider Janita McKenzie were in the chase group. In the men's race team ends as Brad Agil and Genke continued to do the heavy lifting in the second group. Loebscher meanwhile was still looking strong on his own. A massive ride by him and it was starting to create a degree of panic behind as they turned towards Maitland's. Mars Liebenberg, who was the silver medalist in the junior road race at the Nationals in Oatson a week earlier, had a dip on his own. The urgency in the peloton evident on the faces of Josh Lowe of ASAP and Realty Dynamics, Tien van der Bank. Liebenberg was brought to heel and they began climbing to the king of the mountains at Maitland. And it was Loebscher who duly claimed the king of the mountains as he continued his swashbuckling solo raid on the Herald Cycle Tour. Liebenberg was next, followed by a strung out peloton with Van der Bank, the band leader. After close on 80 kilometers on his own, fatigue was starting to creep up on Loebscher. And Van der Bank was doing more than creeping, he was smashing it up the short sharp rise on Seaview Road. Daniel Matthews led the counter, the rest watched each other. Van der Bank was on a mission, keen to make amends after finishing ninth in the 35 to 39 bets race at the Nationals. The chase was on as the main group swung into Sardinia Bay Drive. This was the business end of the race. Lopes' lead was shrinking by the second as Van der Bank drove a fearsome pace. Butler was on his wheel and then Johan Trotsky. Eventually Joshua Lowe made the catch and blew past Daniel Lopescher with a marauding bunch not far behind. Realty Dynamics Neil Rousseau had played a good policing role and he did so again as Josh Lowe made a jump. And it was Funner Bunk looking for a return on his team's investment in the race who went all in one more time, easing past Warwick Minkley. Funner Bunk loaded both barrels and blasted off on his own on Marine Drive. There was little anyone could do in the face of such a devastating solo attack. And Funner Bunk was able to keep it together all the way to the finish to take the win. No, it's a very well organized event. Um, I think it's, there's a lot of organizers that can get and learn from them. Um, you can see for them it's not about making money out of it. The, the cyclists are the important part of that and I think that's the way cycling should be. Um, they, they go all out for the cy cyclists and yeah, that's, that's what you want. It's safe road conditions, um, the marshalling is very good on the road, uh, the comms is very good, the road surfaces are very good. So yeah, no, it's definitely a must ride for, for all road cyclists. Hayley Preen was also solo and on her way to a dominant second victory at the Herald Cycle Tour. The 24-year-old from Hart Bay was the 2021 national champion and a winner of this race a year earlier. Fourth in the national road championships and winner of the first Criterium Nationals in Otsun, she did a time trial of note in Kaberga, with only Father Mark as an occasional vocal companion in her support vehicle alongside her. A classy win by a classy rider. Mariska Matia was second ahead of Shanita McKenzie, Charlissa Schultz and Zanri Rousseau. Today was a completely different race to last year's Herald. Um, I went off the front like 15 kilometers in, so roughly 90 kilometers on my own, so it was a hard day, a long day, but very happy to make it to the line on my own and take the win. The Herald Cycle Tour is ingrained in the sporting culture of Kabecha and it had great support from the Nelson Mandela Bay Municipality. 
and the prime responses the Herald are keen to stay involved. We are committed. <laughs> we are committed for Herald Cycle Tour to live on. It's been 37 years. I mean, we're chasing 40 um, and maybe 50. <laughs> so we're quite excited. I think it's going to be even growing bigger and bigger every year. And well, that's what we aim to do. After 53 k's, it becomes quite tough, eh? The wind conditions, perfect. The weather, we couldn't have asked for better weather. So no complaints from, from the rider side. Uh, so it should not be that much of a climb. It is always a hard climb, but it's one of the most beautiful climbs in the world, so it makes it easier. We've got all this on our doorstep. It's fantastic to race it. Thank you very much, Harold. The Herald Cycle Tour route is amongst the most scenic in the country as it sweeps the riders along the stunning untouched coastline all the way back into the city. The Herald Cycle Tour should be on every cyclist bucket list at least once. It has endured for 37 years and there's no reason why the Herald should not remain on the calendar for many more years to come. It is everything riders could wish for. A challenging but stunningly beautiful route, amazing water points and even free massages at the finish. And of course champagne for the winners, Hayley Preen, the Queen of the Herald this year and Tien Svanabank, the 2023 King of the Herald.